Good day team, welcome back to another episode. Today we're talking about Zigbee 2 MQTT, how to install it and configure it. So the two major differences between Zigbee 2 MQTT and our Home Assistant um, integration being ZHA. So if you go down to settings, integrations, add integrations and type in ZHA. ZHA is pre-configured and very simple to use. However, it supports maybe 80% give or take a couple of your Zigbee devices. And for your 20 give or take, give or take, um, you're going to have to use a third party cloud-based service like Tuya or um, Akura. However, if you use Zigbee to MQTT, it will support a lot more devices. So I've been experimenting with smart home devices and uh, outdoor sirens for my alarm systems. These devices were just were not getting picked up by our ZHA. So let's crack into it and install our Zigbee 2 MQTT. So what you need first is a coordinator or a dongle as people call it or a gateway. I recommend a Sonoff 3.0 USB dongle plus. It is compatible with, compatible with both ZHA if you want to get started off with something simpler or go straight to the MQTT. To use MQTT you will have to flash any device regardless. I will leave the link below for where to purchase it and how to flash it. So let's get started with installing our first add-on. The first add-on required from our Home Assistance add-on store will be MQTT. So go down to your settings. Let's click on add-ons. Click on add-on store and type in MQTT. So we'll be installing our Mosquito Broker as our official add-on provided by Home Assistant. Let's click on install. Once it's been installed, we want to tick on the watchdog to ensure it starts up if it ever crashes, as well as I want to update it if there's an update. In the configuration tab, there is no configuration required. It is all pre uh, predefined for you with the ports and all the variables. Let's click on info and click on start. It started up super quickly. The icon is green. So let's move on to our next. Next, we're going to install Zigbee to MQTT. So in our add-on store, let's search for Zigbee to MQTT. And as we can see, we've got no results found. It is because it is a GitHub repository we need to add. So let's uh, delete this. Let's go to our GitHub repository in the description. We want to select the URL, control C, go back to our home assistance instance, back into the add on store, click on the three dots or the menu, click on repositories and control V and add. And what we're doing is we are adding a third party repository from the GitHub. It's uh, showed up as a valid one, click close, and it might take a couple of minutes for it to load. So what you want to do is refresh and confirm you can see it below. If it's not showing up, give it a couple of minutes. And what we want to do is click on the first one, which is the Zigbee 2 MQTT. We're using our own device without the vendor's bridge or gateway. Let's click on install. Let's click on the watchdog to ensure it is uh, starting up if it ever crashes. Let's click on auto update to make sure we're using the latest version. As well as show in the sidebar for ease of access. Next what we go into is the configuration of the Zigbee 2 MQTT. 
what we'll do now is create a user to be used into our MQTT instance. Let's go down to settings, people, add new person. So we're going to call this one MQTT. We're going to allow to log in and give it a password. We want to allow it to be used only for the local and we'll give it administration. Let's click on create. So user has been created. We want to go back to the segway to MQTT, but via the add-on store and click on configuration. So under MQTT, we're going to specify where our server is, what user we're using for logging in. So server space MQTT call mosquito and the port. If you haven't changed your port from the um, mosquito broker will be port 1883 next user is what we just created so for this example I call it MQTT and we want to specify the password the password I had was password1 next what we'll go through is um, pointing it to our Sonoff device. So the variables we're going to say is port and adapter. So to get your device, you want to go down to settings to system and hardware click on all hardware and scroll down until you see the TTY and expand it so here we have the the port and the ID of it select your ID control C go back to your configuration file and click paste so this is something what it should like look like and the adapter type will be EZSP and we'll click save let's go to info and click start so if you started it and you had no errors you've done it successfully if not you would be either your MQTT username, password, or your port. And if you're unsure of your username and password, delete it, create a new one. And if you're unsure for your port, if you go back into your Mosquito Broker and go Configuration, it will be your normal port. So let's go back to Zigbee to MQTT. Click on Configuration. And... If you're also unsure of your port, verify that again. If you go down to logs, it will give you any errors you are facing as well. If you've done everything correctly and go to Zigbee to MQTT, the page will load for you and you'll be able to start adding devices. So let's go through and add a new device to ensure it is working for everybody and how you do it okay so let's go through and add in our first device in this tutorial we'll be using a door window sensor by Sonoff it works very well it's got uh, scroll down it can sync your statuses very quickly it's got historical data it's the Zigbee protocol which means it's got ultra low uh, en uh, energy usage so your battery will last in excess of six months, if not longer.
depending on how frequently it's being used. So let's go to our Zigbee to MQTT and we're going to click on permit join all. This will allow the discovery phase to be started. It's going to pretty much listen to any Zigbee device wanting to join the network. So let's click on permit join all. And we've got about four minutes for the um, device to discover. So on the device, there'll be a button. Click on that button for a couple of seconds. And it will start propagating all the information. So it's going to go through seeing what device it is. It's going to configure it and it will let you know if it's got any errors. If there's any properties it hasn't discovered, you can click the second button down below where it's, it says reconfigure. This will ask the device to send all the information back to it, the coordinator. So it's reconfiguring the device and it said it's successfully configured. Some devices may require two or three configurations as they've got multiple entities that they can trigger. So what we want to do next is, this is your name currently. Well, let's give it a friendly name. Down below, click on rename device. Let's get rid of that name. I'm going to call it server dot door because it will be utilized for my server room and the door and let's update the home assistance entity id click on rename device and it has propagated already if we go back to devices it also has been updated here So that is all for today. Today we have successfully installed our MQTT, our, which is a attribution of our add-on. The add-on being the Mosquito Broker, which requires a no configuration. Just ensure that you're utilizing port 1883, which is default. We've added our repository from the GitHub to allow us to install Zigbee to MQTT. We have done configuration on our Zigbee to MQTT, so make sure you follow that to get it up and working, where it is your server of the Mosquito Broker and the port, a username, a password, our port, which is our device. In this case, we're using our Sonoff device and we're specifying what adapter it is. And we have successfully added our uh, door sensor to prove our configuration is working. If there's anything you would like to know, send me a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for your time. Have a great time. Bye.